I'm a filmmaker and photographer from Indiana, and today we're going to focus on coloring your Sony footage. More so correcting it and converting it from an S-Log image to a Rec. 709. But we're going to do it in a much different way than you're probably used to. We're not going to use a LUT. We're not going to mess with curves or levels or color wheels. We're going to actually mess with a plugin. The plugin is called the Z-Log Color Grading Plugin, and it's actually for a camera called Z-Cam. I use Z-Cam and have been doing so for about three years. I'm really comfortable with it. I love the color workflow especially. And since adding a Sony a7S III to my roster, I kind of struggle to match them a little bit. However, using the Z-Log Color Grading Plugin on your Sony works wonders, and I'm gonna show you how. Once you've installed the color plugin, let's go ahead and add it to our clips. Keep in mind that all of these are Sony clips, none are Zcam, they're all Sony. So right away, this looks pretty good. I mean, looking at the waveforms here, nothing is um, being overblown, nothing is being crushed, it's kind of close. Um, the colors look pretty dang good to me, it doesn't look oversaturated. Um, so I got lucky with this image, I shot it just right. And that's what's important about shooting Sony footage versus Zcam footage. With the Zcam footage, I can kind of mess up and fix it. With Sony footage, not so much. You've got a little room, but it's difficult. However, this Z-Log color plugin gives you a little bit more flexibility and it can be very impressive, especially if you mess up your white balance. Looking at the plugin, you get a lot of values, a lot of sliders, and it can be kind of confusing. It may be overwhelming, but I promise it's really easy. Even if you don't understand it, kind of mess with the tools that they give you, almost like you're button mashing in Smash Brothers, and you'll figure it out. You'll get a really good image, I promise. Once it's added on, you can see that it's already really converted it to a great looking Rec. 709 image. You've got some other options up here. It's your first option. The input color space, it starts off on Z-Log2, which is Zcam's log profile. And most of the time, this does the trick for me. It works really well, uh, but you've also got different S-Logs. I do shoot an S-Log3 S-Gamut with the three dot cine profile, whatever it's called, but I don't find it to be the best version here. The ones that I like to rotate are the Z-Log2, S-Log2 S-Gamut, and S-Log3 S-Gamut without the Cine profiles. The S-Log2 S-Gamut is a little bit more bright and airy. It brings some of the true color tones back uh, that the Z-Log profile will kind of mess up. Uh, and it kind of gives you a lot of room to play. So let's do that. The exposure still looks pretty nice here. I guess it can maybe be a little bit brighter. Um, and then I'm going to go down to the gamma, which is kind of like your blacks. It's really going to add in contrast um, and see how that looks. I really like that. You can see over here on our waveforms, we're not crushing down to the, the blacks, which is zero, and we're still not blowing anything out. This is a really pleasant image, um, and I'm honestly really happy with it. Let me show you something, though, about the Z-Log footage here. Once I put it back, you can see that it gets a lot more yellow and a lot more warm. So let me uh, bring the exposure up just a little bit here, maybe like two. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this option called saturation correction. It doesn't work well on the S-Log profiles, but it does on the Sony. So I just clicked it and those greens went kind of back to normal. It's a little bit of a different look, like you're actually grading it. It's a little bit desaturated and darker and it may work for you. But that's the point. This plugin is so easy to use and so flexible and gives you so many options and can even give you a look without grading it. It's just giving you a conversion and giving you different options versus just putting on one LUT that converts it. But the greatest thing about this is having control over the exposure and the white balance. Let's show you another clip here. I think this is a really great example. We have a bright sky in the background that's paired with a pro mist filter, which is gonna make it bloom even more, makes it even more difficult to deal with the contrast that we see here between Emily under the trees. Let me throw on the Z-Log color plugin. And uh, again, this looks really great. Let's go to the S-Log3 S gamut, see what happens. The greens look better, it got darker, this looks much more natural. Um, and I'm also gonna mess with the saturation correction and see what happens. You can see that it brings the saturation of the greens back. If you're going for that, then great. I'm going for that. 
For this clip though, I really want to bring the exposure down. To normally do that with curves or levels or color wheels, it can be kind of difficult because you can get a dull look in the highlights. It's sometimes really hard to bring the exposure down in post, but this tool makes it fairly easy. Let me just start off by moving the exposure stop down. I mean, right away, you're not really getting that dull look. We're not really crushing the blacks anywhere, maybe except in this corner, you can kind of see it's getting close. I still want to make it brighter in the sky, and so that's where I'm going to mess with the gain. The gain tool can really help you bring back some normality to the shot. And honestly, I really like this. Something else you can do is you can bring the lift down if you really want to go for a silhouette look, but that's just ridiculous. So let's keep trying something else. Let's bring this exposure down even more until Emily here is basically a silhouette and we're kind of getting that doll look. So let's go ahead and go back to our gain. Kind of mess with our offset here. I really like that. I think that's pretty cool. It looks fairly natural as if I really did expose it for the sky. That's sick. Let's go ahead and throw on a normal LUT here see what happens I love that but we've got one problem we're crushing the blacks in places that we don't want to crush it so here's something else that's really cool now this may just be a final cut thing but I'm going to add in a um, an inverted vignette so in final cut I'm going all the way up here to the plugin to where you kind of see this square and a circle within it add a shape mask and then I'm going to drag this outer ring out even further Till I get to a point to where that contrast is hitting the, the grass on the sides, but it's not crushing it. You can kind of adjust this as well. Maybe we can move this circle up. Yeah. Check that out. Let's go ahead and duplicate this layer really quick. And let's, um, remove that one and throw on the regular Z-Log plugin. So I have two totally different looks here. I did prefer the S-Log 3S on both versions here. But we've got this one which is fairly well exposed everywhere. It's a, it's a nice balanced image, but if I'm going for something moodier, I was able to do that. I was able to crush Emily into the blacks and make her a silhouette, but still maintain that detail in all of the grass and the plants that we've got. Here's another really well balanced image. We've got detail in the sky. We've got detail in the shadows. We can see our waveforms are just perfect for this. This is exactly what I'm looking for when filming with the Sony a7S III. Again, let's go ahead and throw on the Z-Log color grading plugin, see what it looks like. Not bad, not bad. The, the filter that I'm using is making it look a little bit hazy and uh, might be a little too strong for this. So let's see what we can do, if we can do anything. Before I start grading though, I'm going to throw on the LUT that I like. By the way, I'm using White and Reveries LUTs. Uh, they're freaking amazing. For this one in particular, I'm using their Dolce 2. I love it. I, I really, 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 really like it. It's a great starting point. Um, sometimes I bring the mix down a little bit. And for this case, let's keep that LUT on and then correct the color. This isn't too bad. Again, I really like the Z-Log 2. I'd say 80% of the time I stick with it. Um, What's also cool is you can kind of mess with the saturation correction here, which I think looks great. It's a little bit more of a filmic look. Let's go ahead and bring the lift down. And I actually really like this. I, I think this looks really cool. It's very filmic. It's uh, kind of a clean image. It's as clean as you could get with the filtration that I was using with that harsh back sun in the middle of the day. Um, but we can see that we're getting that vignette where it's really crushing the black, especially on this left side. I want to keep finagling with like the gamma and a couple other options here. Maybe raise the exposure, maybe not. Maybe we can lower it actually. Bring that gamma back or we'll just reset it. Bring that lift back. Kind of mess with the saturation again here. Hell, let's just keep the saturation correction on. I like how it desaturates the greens. Um, something else that you can do here is you can really mess with the tint, the hue, and the temperature. So let's see if we can get something interesting here. We can make this a much warmer look. Um, it actually kind of looks nice. 
That's kind of cool. And that's another thing that I really like about the Z-Log color plugin on the Sony footage is that if you do mess up your temperature, try this. You may be able to save yourself. It's really impressive. Let's stick with that warmer look though, um, but let's get rid of this vignette. So again, I'm gonna add this shape mask and we're gonna drag this vignette out till we get to kind of a point that I like. That's the feathering at least and let's actually shift this out and see what happens. Look at that, isn't that great? All right, next clip here, let's go ahead and throw on the Z-Log color plugin. It's right on, we've already got our LUT applied to, um, so we can really adjust things here. Uh, this looks awesome. There's, I, I don't see anything that I would want to adjust with this. It was a nice, beautiful spring day. Those colors are beautiful. Maybe we can try the S-Log 2S gamut, which makes it a little bit more milkier and desaturated and less contrast. But let's add that contrast back in with the gamma. Let's see what saturation correction does. Ooh, that's a little too much. Bring that gamma back. It's also a little cool, so let's warm it up just a tad. And I do think that saturation was still too much, so let's uh, move this slider just a tad. Stunning. See, I'm using the S-Log 2 here. The Z-Log could have worked. I'm sure S-Log 3 could have worked here as well. It just gives you different parameters and slightly different colors and looks. So have fun with it. Final shot here, let's add on the Z-Log color grading plugin, and it looks like it did absolutely nothing. This is just such a, a bright shot. I don't actually understand why it looks like this and why it has turned out this way. It's just very not contrasty. The color is completely washed out. So let's see what we can do. Because it's so bright, I'm gonna apply the S-Log 3S gamut. Made it a little bit better. Let's bring the gamma down, really add in that contrast, apply to the shadows, and this is extremely red. I hate this. What does saturation correction do? Makes it worse. Let's mess with the temperature, maybe make it cooler. Hey, that's not too bad. I'd say that that could work. Just depends on the rest of the film. Um, sometimes the SLG 3 s gamut puts too much red into the, the image. You can really see it in his skin tone here. Doesn't look that great. So let's try and go back to Z-Log 2. Um, we're gonna bring that gamma back down even more. This is actually looking nice. His skin tone's looking a little bit green now. So let's see what saturation correction does. Not bad. Desaturates things just a little bit. So maybe we can add it back in. Bring this temperature back to a warmer tone. Maybe even bring the exposure down. Oh, look at that. Exposure is really down, but we still got detail in everything, so maybe we can bring up the gain. Exposure stop maybe one, if I can get it. That gain back down. I actually really like this. Yeah, there's just a couple of different looks. It depends on if you like this green in his skin or if you don't. Um, it's totally personal opinion at this point, just like most coloring is. This can be an extremely powerful tool. It can help you save some footage that you messed up on. It can help you get a better image than you even imagined. And it can also give you more control over things like highlight, tint, the temperature, the shadows. It's just a much more fun and a much more pleasing and a much better result 99% of the time. I really thank you for being here and I hope that this introduced you to a new way of coloring footage. I'll see you on the next one.